of 9th standard i hope you all are fine let us start with the new chapter from your first language english so here the main aspects what we get to see or read is related to our life or our day to day life the picture in this clip itself gives you a clue wherein it is about a granny or you can also tell that the life of our grandparents so all of us enjoy a lot when we are with our grandparents so many of us have got that unique opportunity wherein we could spend our childhood with our grandparents now most of you also have got that in your life so you enjoy it a lot and you have your own experiences in the same way the writer of this lesson that is kushwan singh has written his life experience that is his life with this grandmother and he tries to give you the picture or portrait the life of his grandmother here in this lesson the language is very easy if you just go on reading the lesson itself you will come to know because there are many events which has got the link with our present life that is your life with your grandparents so the name of this lesson or the lesson is the portrait of a lady portrait is used in two ways or the meanings you get in two ways that one is the picture or a photo of a person wherein the face the face is projected a lot or one more thing is it comes to the printing aspect that is when you take the print out you take it in a portrait form or in a landscape form but here the meaning of the word portrait is you get the picture of the life of the grandmother of the writer that is kushwan singh so before going to the lesson we'll know few information about the writer one of the most important writers when it comes to the indian literature on indian english literature kushwan singh is an indian writer in english he was born on 2nd february 1914 he is a prominent indian novelist and journalist singh's weekly column with malai stewards one and all carried by several indian newspapers is among the most widely read columns in the country so as i told you that very important or one of the important indian writers so he was prominent indian novelist and journalist novelist means one who writes novels and here main thing what you have to see is so his weekly column so when you read newspapers you see especially when it is your sunday newspaper or sometimes the weekend newspaper you will have that weekly column in that so that column was very important that was written by the writer that is kushwan singh so here you come to know the way of writing which was very prominent one singh is best known for his pen chat for pen chat for secularism his humor and an abiding love of poetry so he is the recipient of the padma bhushan in 1974 and padma vibhushan in 2007 he was one of the editors of the famed illustrated weekly of india so here other aspects to which he is well known is one thing is his pen chant for secularism then his humor and an abiding love of poetry so he also had love towards poetry and he was 
humor in, he was humorous in writing and all these things tell us that he was well known when it comes to the indian english literature so he has received the padma bhushan in 1974 and padma vibhushan in 2007 so this is a small introduction regarding the writer of this lesson or the prose part so concentrate on the reading and also the sentences so that you can try to write your own answers when it comes to your test or exam that is very important regarding all the languages that you are studying or learning so when you can write your own answers or you go on improving your language then you will always be very perfect in your writing and reading so follow the reading pronunciation and you can start reading the lessons which all which are already covered as most of you have got your textbooks my grandmother like everybody's grandmother was an old woman she had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that i had known her people said that she had once been young and pretty and even had a husband but that was hard to believe my grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room he wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes his long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least 100 years old he did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children so here what happens is the introduction of the life of his grandmother that is the writer's grandmother so he tells that like all of you even i had grandmother and she was an old woman and he is also telling the appearance usually when they are old you might have observed that they have wrinkle skin that is because of their age the wrinkled skin and he tells that he has seen such appearance since 20 years means as he came to know or he has grown up a little from then he has observed his grandmother or she was old with wrinkled face now here you observe here she had been old and wrinkled for 20 years then she is telling that people said that she had once been young so he had listened from other people or his mom or dad that even she was young and she had she was young pretty and she had a husband so you are getting the introduction of the grandmother's life but he was not able to believe it he is telling that it is hard to believe means he has seen his grandmother as a old lady so listening to all these things that she was young pretty and she had a husband it was not very easy for him to believe we also have experienced all these things isn't it children when we are kids or when we are in our childhood usually we also get to listen about the stories of our grandmother or grandfather when they were young or what they were doing and we could only imagine a little bit but it is not so easy to believe everything but that was hard to believe my grandfather's portrait hung about a uh, mantelpiece so what's the meaning of the word mantelpiece a structure of wood or marble or stone above and around a fireplace so there was a place where the fire used to be burnt especially this place is used to uh, fire when you feel very cold or during the winter season so that is called as mantelpiece and above that a portrait of his grandfather was hung now what is his appearance you can see here and that mantelpiece was in the drawing room 
he wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes so appearance of his grandfather and he had long white beard which had already covered up to his chest up to his chest very long beard and he looked at least a hundred years old so that portrait whatever was there or the photo of his grandfather so in that his father looked as if he is hundred years old he did not look the sort of person who would who would who would have a wife or a children so here usually what happens after their death we keep the photos which is from their old age itself so see how the writer is telling here is by seeing his photo he could not believe or he did not feel that he was such a person who would have have a wife or a children yes usually in old age you don't uh, that the appearance will never tell you all these things but yes in their younger days surely they would have married they would have wife or children this is their life he looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren yeah that photo will surely tell that he is in his old age and he would have have or he could have lots and lots of grandchildren as for my grandmother being young and pretty the thought was almost revolting so here he is comparing the appearance of his grandfather with his grandmothers so what he felt is his grandmother was always young and pretty so she used to look young or pretty but this is how there was a confusion within him that is regarding the appearance of his grandfather and grandmother so grandfather's photo it was of old age even his grandmother is in old age but even then he feels that his grandmother was young and pretty and there was a conflict between this aspects in his mind she often told us of the games she used to play as a child that seemed quite absurd and undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables of the prophets she used to tell us so here the grandmother used to tell about her childhood or she used to tell her grandchildren about the play about the games or the way they used to play in their childhood and all these things it seemed a little bit absurd to the grandchildren what's the meaning of the word absurd that is illogical so what happens when we get to hear the stories of our grandparents and when we compare that with our life there will be lots of changes so this is what we tell that there is lots of changes when it comes to the different generations so what life we are leading now it is something different from the life what our grandparents have already led so thus he feels that it was a little bit absurd means listening to the type of the games they used to play or the life they used to lead everything is something different and he felt that it was absurd and undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables fables means some stories usually wherein you feel that everything is not true fables of the prophets and she used to keep on telling us all these things she had always been short and fat and slightly bent her face was a criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere no we were certain she had always been as we had known her old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful she hobbled about the house in spotless white with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop and the other telling the beads of her 
rosary so here completely you will get the picture of the appearance or the look of the grandmother of the writer so she was short and fat and slightly bent so usually when they get old so some people they have a bend or they bent because of their age so that is the appearance here then her face had wrinkles criss cross means there were wrinkles which appeared on her face so the appearance of that wrinkles is meant as criss cross and no we were certain she had always been as we had known her so now here what the writer is telling is he feels that she was always the way she is appearing now so usually the grandchildren get to see the face or the appearance of the grandparents in their old age so that is what the writer is telling here no we were certain she had always been as we had known means the appearance what we know or what we are seeing that is what is her look this is the meaning he is telling old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years so here he is telling that the appearance is same there is no changes or she cannot grow more old since 20 years he feels her appearance is the same she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful so he cannot imagine the appearance of his grandmother that she could be pretty he cannot imagine that because he has seen her in her old age but he tells that his grandmother is always beautiful she hobbled about the house hobbled is the meaning walk in an awkward way means because of her age and she was bent the movement she used to do or she used to walk about so it appeared a little bit awkward or because of the age problem that is hobbled and she used to wear very clear or neat white dress or sari that is spotless white means very neat with one hand resting on her waist so when they are in old age this is also one thing we observe in them is when they walk they try to balance their waist by holding it with one hand so always her one hand was on her waist and she used to go on telling or counting the beads of the rosary rosary is a string of beads so this also you might have observed in your house your grandparents they will have that string of beads they'll go on counting it and they'll be repeating or reciting the prayer so this is the usual look of the grandparents or appearance in every house her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale puckered face and her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayer yes she was beautiful she was like the landscape in the mountains and expanse of pure white serenity breathing peace and contentment yes first he tells you about the physical appearance of his grandmother now in this last part you get to see that appearance which usually we observe in our grandparents even though they are old they look aged but that beauty or the way they lead life is something different so here is telling her silver locks so why is he call calling it as silver locks that is the hair it is gray silver locks that this part of the face that is the hair that grows on this part it is called as the locks usually you observe a lot in uh male that it will be little bit lengthy but when it comes to the female you can see this hair here so there this is called as a lock and he tells that the silver locks means the gray hairs 
were scattered, scattered untidily over a pale puckered face. Means those side hairs on the face, usually they were scattered on her face. Her pale, pale is because of the old age. So her face was not very bright, but it was pale, puckered. Puckered is contracted into wrinkles. Because of the wrinkles, there was contraction on her face and her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayers. So every time she used to just go on reciting the prayers. Inaudible means it is not possible to be heard. So we usually don't get to hear because they will just go on murmuring it or tell it in a very low voice. Yes, she was beautiful. See, this is the uh, real thing what we observe when it comes to our grandparents. Whatever they are because of their age, but they are always beautiful. She was like the landscape in the mountains and an expanse of pure white serenity. So when it comes to her appearance, so he is comparing it to the landscape in the mountain area or the expanse of pure white serenity. Serenity is peaceful. Expanse of pure white serenity, breathing peace and contentment. Contentment is a state of happiness. A lady who is old but she was very beautiful or she is compared to the landscape in the mountains and she was pure white serenity that is a peaceful breathing or she was very kind or peaceful lady and she was a state of happiness. So when we look at them we really enjoy the way they lead their life. My grandmother and I were good friends. My parents left, the, left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together. She used to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school. She said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing-song while she bathed and dressed me in the hope that I would listen and get to know it by heart. I listened because I loved her voice and never, but never bothered to learn it. So, still more important aspect what we come to know here is the writer was very friendly with this grandmother. This is what we also experienced or you are also experiencing. Usually, we get very close to our grandparents. And my parents let me leave with her. Means he was living with this grandmother and his parents were settled in the city. And we were constantly together. Continuously they used to be together. That is the grandmother and the writer. She used to wake me up in the morning. Means they used to get up early. And she used to wake him up. Get him ready for school. And usually what she used to do is. Whenever she was doing any work, that is getting him ready or giving him bath or give him, giving him breakfast, whatever it is, during all her work, she used to just go on chanting. Chanting means repeating the morning prayer monotonously. Monotonous is lacking in variation in tone or pitch. Means there is no any change in the way she was reciting it. But monotonously, she used to just go on reciting that. Uh, prayer that is monotonous sing song. There is no more changeover of the voice. So whenever she used to give him bath, dress him or anything, she used to go on doing this. Why did she do this? She thought by listening to this, even her grandson will also learn all these things or he will also start learning all these prayers by heart. By heart is memorize. I listened it. He tells that I listened because I loved her voice. I really loved her voice but I never bothered to learn it. Then she would fetch my wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk 
a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen. Tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me. After a breakfast of thick, stale chapati with the little butter and sugar spread on it, we went to school. She carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs. So after getting him ready, what did she do? What, uh, what was the daily thing? What is that uh, routine of their life is? She used to pack all his things. That is whatever he needs to take to the school. That is the slate. Then she a tiny earthen ink pot. Earthen means made out of clay or mud. And a red pen. And everything she used to tie it together. Bundle it and give it to him. After a breakfast. So after breakfast means. That is they used to move from there. So what was the breakfast there? Thick stale chapati. So she used to prepare chapati is very thick. And he used to tell that it used to be stale. Stale means not very tasty. A normal one. Not very uh, tasty. Even stale means which is almost little bit. What is that? You have a different smell in that. Stale chapatis. So she used to give him stale chapati with the butter and sugar spread on that so after they had it so she used to also carry it to the dogs which they used to meet in their way to the school so when they went to the school so wherever they met that dogs they, she used to feed that dogs also so she used to carry the chapatis with her for the village dogs My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. The, the priest taught us the alphabet and the morning prayer while the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda singing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus. My grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. When we had both finished, we would walk back together. This time, the village dogs would meet us at the temple. Temple door. They followed us to our home, growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them. So this is again their daily routine. His grandmother used to daily go with him to the school. The reason was... There was a temple that was attached to his school. So when the priest there used to teach the students alphabet and also the morning prayer, what did the grandmother do? So she used to go and sit inside the temple. So they were taught the alphabet and morning prayer in the veranda there. So children used to sit and they used to sit in rows. On either side of the veranda. Veranda is a roofed platform along the outside of a house. Level with the ground floor. So the corridor, the veranda. So they were all sitting there. And they used to learn the alphabet and the prayer in chorus. Chorus means all of them used to repeat it at a time. At that time, the grandmother used to sit inside the temple and read the scriptures there. So the scriptures maybe that are there on the walls of the temple or the other scriptures whatever available she used to sit and read. Once both are finished means once the writer finishes class and grandmother also finishes her reading they used to walk back together. So usually when they walk back they used to meet lots of dogs and at that temple door and they used to also follow with them because the chapatis were put for them to eat and they used to growl and fight with each other. Growling is a very harsh sound made by the dogs when they fight with each other. So they used to growl, they used to fight with each other for the purpose of that chapatis that were thrown by the writer and his grandmother. When my 
parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. That was a turning point in our friendship. Although we shared the same room, my grandmother no longer came to school with me. I used to go to an English school in a motor bus. There were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house. So now there is a start in the life, there is a start which changes the life of the writer and his grandmother. So you will come to know part by part how the changes take place. So now his parents who are in the city, they were comfortably settled means they could manage their life comfortably in the city. At that time what did they do? They sent word to the granny and the writer to join them that is to lead their life or live with them in the city. So they were asked to come to the city there. So once they got shifted there, granny and the writer, so, so it was a turning point in their life. Turning point means they started the changes. The life that they led in the village was something different compared to the life in the city. So that's why the writer tells that it was a turning point when it came to our friendship because he was very close to his grandmother. So what are the changes? They lived in the same room. Even then, his grandmother was not coming with him to the school. She was not coming with him because he was going by bus. In the village, they used to walk together, isn't it? So here, the writer started traveling by bus. And uh, one more thing is, he used to go to the English school. Means, he joined a English medium school. And he is also telling that there were no dogs in the streets while coming back from the school. And because of that, the granny started feeding sparrows in the courtyard of their city house. In the courtyard means the veranda or the area in front of the house. So there she started feeding the sparrows. So this is one main change that occurred in the life of the writer and the grandmother. As the years rolled by, we saw less of each other. For some time, she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school. When I came back, she would ask me what the teacher had taught me. I would tell her English words and little things of Western science and learning, the law of gravity, Archimedes principle, the world being round, etc. This made her unhappy. She could not help me with my lessons. She did not believe in the things they taught at the English school and was distressed that there was no teaching about God and the scriptures. She said, Nothing but her silence meant disapproval. She rarely talked to me after that. See, first change you already saw that. They could not spend time with each other when he used to go to the school. Because granny was not accompanying him. Now there, is a, there, there are so many changes. So he is telling as years rolled by. Roll means as the years went on going or the past years. So what happened? They were not able to meet each other because he was busy with the studies. He used to go in the morning and come in the evening again sit with this work. So he could not meet his granny a lot. But even then the granny continued to wake him up, get him ready and send him to the school. And when he came back she used to try to ask him that what have you studied in the school? What is your school experience? And it was completely changed there. So in the village used to be taught, used to be taught with some alphabet and then the morning prayers or 
the prayers related to God. But here it was an English school. So he was taught English words. Then little things of Western science. So he was being taught science. And he was learning about the gravity. All your scientific aspects. And Archimedes principle. The world being round. So we all know that. So all these aspects means he was into proper schooling. He was getting his education in a proper channel. But this was something different to grandmother. Because her way of living or what she has learned, everything was different. And this is how she was not very happy with the education what he was getting. This made her unhappy. Why is it? She could not help me with my lesson. So your right wrestling, why was she unhappy? She was not able to help him out in his lessons because it was completely different. So chanting prayers or telling some moral stories, all these things was the knowledge what the grandmother had. But what he is studying was completely different. She did not believe in the things they taught at the English school and was distressed. So she was not much interested in the aspects what was taught in the English school and she did not believe in that and she was distressed. Distress is she was sorrow that there was no teaching about God and the scriptures. So what was she feeling that there was no teaching regarding belief in God, the scriptures related to the God. This is not taught in that school. She said nothing. She used to never give her opinion or she used to never oppose all those things. But how could the writer come to know? He could come to know by a silence that used to be on her face or she used to never give any opinion. That showed her disapproval means she never approved or she never liked such type of education. She rarely talked to me after that. So there was a communication gap. He was being taught in a western way or he was getting the modern education and he is growing up. So this made a gap in between the grandmother and the grandson. See children, this we have also experienced and you will also experience this when we were like when you are small children you get attached a lot as you grow you will have your own way of leading the life or you will get burdened with the lots of studies, homework or your own choices in which way you want to lead the life and thus there will be a gap. So that is what has happened here and I think till now you have followed the lesson and you have observed or listened properly to my reading and keep reading these paragraphs which will help you out to know the lesson properly okay this is the first part of the lesson we'll continue the lesson in the next part thank you